Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode of the Dream 80 and Phase 2. And this week we're going to be talking about food plot architecture and access to the property. Some of the equipment when we brought in uh, uh, for this project of cleaning up this farm and, and making it uh, absolutely perfect. Um, starting in the bottom though and just architecture in general, we knew where we wanted the food plots to be based on uh, what the previous owner had had them on the property, but we needed to push them back, clean them up. So uh, we burned some of the, the switchgrass and CRP grass that was on the property off, cleaned that up, uh, got that back to square one that was really thick and matted down. Um, there was a bunch of trees that had fallen down on edges, um, uh, soil that you know needed to uh, get some different fertility into it and uh, come up with a different plan there. So first of all, on the bottom, the field was much smaller and there was a, another field in the back that we just wanted to either uh, plant for uh, cover down in the bottom to make the deer feel more secure and then just load it with turnips. We didn't even plan on hunting at all. We put some cameras there um, and uh, did some, uh, uh, drilled some switchgrass into it and just wanted to see how the deer used that down there, see where the trails ended up uh, coming into, into that field and seeing how we could hunt it in the future. It's a bottom field. I'm not uh, huge on hunting bottoms and, and not very successful in there. Um, I get winded all the time and, and I'm not sure uh, how to hunt that just yet, so I uh, wanted to see how those deer were using that bottom after we had made it big enough to be uh, more than just a quarter acre, you know, little destination. We opened it up to probably about an acre and then uh, planted a turnip blend in there, a uh, big uh, green food plot down in that bottom. It was just beautiful this fall and got a ton of pictures down there. I mean, there was probably um, 15 to 20 deer in it every single night um, before dark. Uh, so a lot of deer were using it and uh, uh, gave us a really good handle on how to hunt that in the future. Um, there's also a road accessing the top of this property for top access on the south side. And um, it wasn't, if you drive a buggy up there, a pickup or a tractor, the branches were scratching. Um, it needed to be widened out. So we brought the brush cutter in there on the front of the skid steer, cut that back, brought in a dozer, widened that out so you could drive a truck, a tractor, a planter, anything that you want for tillage all the way up that hill. Uh, um, safely with a big fertilizer buggy behind the tractor, uh, just making sure we widened it out, straightened, uh, straightened it out a little bit, and then gave it less of a slope. Uh, took out some of the ditches and, and washouts that were in there, cleaned that up, cleaned up the fields, pushed those back, got the brush, the stumps, the trees that were growing up, some of the buckthorn and the uh, the tall grasses and weeds that had grown up, burnt back, pushed back, and just kind of got it back to a square one where we could, we could uh, put some food plot architecture, if you will, into play. So, we uh, knew we were gonna plant corn and soybeans. We uh, don't ever wanna lose that part of the growing season uh, on our farms. If we can get grains into them, we're going to, to try to do that as much as we can. Um, on the top, there's a really cool pinch point with a huge cottonwood tree. It already had a tree stand in it. So uh, when we were going on our initial walks on the property, checking it out, documented a plan, there was an old tree stand there and it made sense to hunt that with any east wind, blowing it out over a wide open field. And there's a ditch right in front of it that's just a natural fun to where if the deer are coming out in in daylight they're they're going to go from one field to the other more than likely they're not they're not big enough to where they're going to spend their whole night uh, or morning in one of those fields they're going to go to uh, both those fields so perfect natural uh, uh, pinch and a, and a gully running up there where the deer are going to come on the top side of it to go to that other field or uh, or to transition and then there's a big cottonwood tree right on the back side of it, a perfect spot for a stand. There was already a stand there. We had to go uh, fix it and, and uh, uh, put a, a better version in there uh, just to make sure it was safe and up high enough, but ended up being a great spot. And it's where uh, Shannon ended up shooting the, the 10 point management buck uh, out of that, that, that individual tree. So what we did with the food plot architecture, we wanted to make sure it was gonna funnel them right through there. The top side, we wanted to plant corn. Um, for a couple of different reasons. One, we wanted to give it some screening from the neighbor uh, and from that side, we didn't know what the situation was there at all and wanted to make sure to have uh, corn up on up on the top to stop any kind of snow that might be blowing up there and kind of snow fence that, give it some more cover to the, to the downhill food plots and uh, make sure we had corn in there to get the ears up and out of the snow in the event we got a lot of snow. Just below the corn, um, we put in, uh, we drilled uh, soybeans. And the backup to the soybeans was turnips and the backup to the turnips was rye. In the event we don't get rains in this part of Iowa in late August, uh, early September, we always 
always want to make sure to have a backup and a backup to that. So we, we planted the corn even with uh, uh, 36 inch rows really wide, knowing that if we didn't get the rain or, or uh, um, not knowing the fertility of that, not having the planting, uh, if we planted it with really wide rows, at least we'd be able to broadcast turnips into there or, or rye and, and use that as well. So. Uh, we wanted to have our, um, our regular grains and our, our greens, but we also wanted to make sure to have a backup plan. And uh, uh, on top, what we learned was sitting in a box blind up there and watching how the deer came into those, into those fields. One, they're using the transition area between uh, the two fields Every, every deer uh, would go through there. So with an east wind, it made it, uh, our hunch was that that would make it a really easy spot um, to shoot almost any deer on that farm out of this giant cottonwood tree. And uh, Shannon shot the most mature buck that was there consistently out of there the first night. So our hunch was correct. Having the diversification of food on both sides, what we learned there is uh, we just need more of it. Um, there's a lot of deer in that neighborhood and um, I think we left three or four acres of corn on that farm and probably another four or five in turnips and soybeans and um I would venture to say it's not going to make it till February 1st. So um, architecture in the future is going to be adding more browse to the farm, adding some more uh, mass production, uh, producing trees, uh, some late hanging, you know, uh, persimmons or pears or apples, something like that. And then uh, figuring out how we can get more grains into that, into those areas, because that worked really well. But again, we're going to have to make them bigger uh, so that that works, uh, but it just works longer. We don't want uh, the deer to ever have to leave the property because they ran out of food. Food or uh, or there's not enough there um, to get them started uh, into the spring with you know antler production or, or fawn production. So a little bit of the architecture and, and the cleanup process that we that we've had so far and what we learned about the uh, the food plot architecture on the farm, how the deer move through the farm, and uh, st just sitting back and watching more than hunting this first year. Uh, we hunted it a few times, but we did way more watching uh, just to see how the deer are going to use the property so we can make those habitat improvements in the future. Uh, I want to thank you for watching this week's episode of The Dream 80, and uh, give us a thumbs up and a like if uh, you like what we're putting out. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Thanks, guys.